So the third type of solving for quadratic equations, we've factored, okay, we've, we've used factoring, or the square root, though that was sort of method one, method two. The third one is called completing the square. Honestly, I don't think you will ever use this by choice, okay, but it is a skill that is going to be useful for our next unit. So we are going to learn how to do this. Um, and I do expect you to know how to do this. I will ask you on a test to use completing the square to solve, okay? Um, you will need it for the next unit, and you'll see why then. All right, so to complete the square, you have to understand what a perfect square trinomial is. This is a perfect square trinomial. The reason it's a perfect square trinomial is when you factor, you end up with two factors that are the same. In fact, they're x plus 3 squared. That's a perfect square. Okay, so what would make this one a perfect square? In other words, what would make it something like this? How would you figure that out? What would k have to be? Well, hopefully that you can figure that out this would be 8. And if it was, okay, that means we would have x squared plus 8x plus 16 and this would factor as x plus 4, x plus 4, or x plus 4 squared. Okay, now how did you, how do you get that? Well, you would take this, the square root of it, which is 4, and you would write that twice, and then that adds up to 8. Okay, well this one's a little bit backwards. What would k have to be here to make this a perfect square? So think about that for a second. When you're ready, press play again. It should be 1. Okay, so let's try that. This would then be x minus 1, x minus 1, or x minus 1 squared. Okay, now before you try C, there is actually a method. Okay, I know guess and check will work, but there's a better method. We're going to take to find out how to go from here to get that, you're going to take that b term, you're going to divide it by 2, and then you're going to square it. Okay, so let's try it over here. If you took k, divide it by 2, and squared it, you should get 16. Okay, and if you figure this out, you're going to get k is 8. All right, so let's try this one. What would we do here? You would take the b value, which is negative 3, divide it by 2, and square it. Okay, so that means k is 9 fourths. So you would get x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourths, and this would factor as x. Oh what would we put there? Well, this value is always what you got before you squared it, which is negative 3 over 2. Okay, so that's how you find that perfect square, because you're going to have to learn how to make a perfect square, but we'll try some of them. So here are your steps of how to complete the square. Okay, it says to isolate the terms containing the x's. I'll show you what that means. Then you're going to factor out the a if necessary, because you will have to. Okay, sometimes, not always. Um, well, let's, let's, let's try a question, then we'll go back to the steps. So we're going to complete the square here. Okay, first thing it says is to isolate the terms with x. So I'm going to write this. And I'm going to put the minus 3 over here with a space. Okay, so I've isolated the terms with x. Then it says factor out the a, if a is not 1. Well, in this case, a is 1, so I don't have to do that. Then it says take the coefficient of x, divide by 2, and square it. This is what we just talked about to make it a perfect square. So take this, take the 4, divide it by 2, and square it. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is Four. Okay, 
Now it says add this number to both sides. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say what's called balance the equation. Okay, because it doesn't make sense to just add it twice. Well, here's what this means. What did I just do here? I put in a plus 4. Well, if you're going to put a plus 4, you have to compensate by putting a minus 4. Okay, so I'm going to put the minus 4. That balances the equation now. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We've got x plus 4x plus 4, because I want to keep that perfect square, and then I've got minus 7 equals 0. This is a perfect square, so let's factor it. This is going to be x plus 2 squared minus 7 equals 0. Okay, so now we've almost completed the square. Let's now write x plus 2 squared equals 7. So now we just put the 7 on the other side. Take the square root. So you're going to get x plus 2 is plus or minus the root of 7. Remember this plus or minus. And then what is x? It's plus or minus the root of 7 minus 2. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, remember the first step was to isolate the terms with x in them. And in the last one I put the 2 out here. You know, that's okay. We can also put the 2 on the other side of the equals. Then it becomes a negative 2. Same thing. Doesn't matter to me which way you do it. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to make this a perfect square. We take the b value, divide it by 2, and square it. So that's going to be plus 49 over 2. Oh, sorry, plus 49 over 4. Okay, now remember I told you at this stage we need to balance the equation. So we just added a 49 over 2. Sorry, it's not 49 over 2. It's 49 over 4. Okay, so we need to balance the equation. So we're going to add 49 over 4 to this side. Remember in the last equation we did both things on one side, this time I'm doing them on opposite sides. It doesn't matter, you just have to make sure that you're balancing the equation. Okay, so then let's now factor this. This is going to be what? x times x. What was 49 over 4 before we squared it? 7 over 2. Okay, and if we want to put this together, you need common denominators. So negative 8 fourths plus 49 over 4. And so this is x minus 7 over 2 squared equals 41 over 4. Okay, not quite finished. We're going to take the square root now. So you have this, and then you have the root of 41 over 4, plus or minus. And then you're going to get the root of 41. Now I'm going to put 2 down here because I took it out of the square root. And why did I do that? Because now I have common denominators. Okay. A little bit tricky for sure. Let's try another one. So we'll isolate the terms with x in them. I think I'm going to put the 5 on the other side. It just seems to be a little bit easier. We'll do it that way. Okay, so now what makes this a perfect square? We're going to take negative 9, divide it by 2, and square it. So this is going to be 81 over 4. That means we have to balance the equation, 81 over 4. Okay, factoring this. This would be x. And what goes here? What was 81 over 4 before I squared it? It was negative 9 over 2. So let's find common denominators. Okay. So now we can take the square root of both sides. So I get x minus 9 over 2 
is plus or minus the square root of 61 over 4. Okay, and so x is plus or minus the root of 61 over 2 plus 9 over 2. And so you can write that as one term. It's actually 2 because of the plus or minus, but you put it together as one fraction. Okay? Now, let's make a couple that are a little bit harder. A little bit trickier here because there's fractions. Now, remember what I told you because of this equal sign. It's kind of nice. I can multiply everything by 2. Okay, if I multiply this whole equation by 2, I get x squared plus 6x minus 9 equals 0. Look at that. No more fractions. Okay, and I can do that because it's an equation, not an expression. So I'm going to isolate the terms of x. Find out this value. 6 divided by 2 is 3 squared is 9. So I'll add 9 to both sides. And so I get x plus what before I squared it? It was x plus 3 is 18. So I'll get x plus 3 if I take the square root. And x is plus or minus, oops, I forgot the square root. The square root of 18 minus 3. And I'll probably be a little bit generous with you here if you didn't notice this could be reduced or simplified. When we're completing this square, I'm a little bit lenient with you. Okay, it's the only time that I won't be too fussy if you don't simplify fully. Okay, next one. Um, uh, this negative kind of bugs me. I think I'd like to get rid of that. What if I multiply everything by a negative 1? Then this becomes positive 5x squared, positive 10x, minus 2. Okay, let's isolate the terms with x. And, uh-oh, here's where there's a little bit of a problem. This is the first time we've had an a value that's not 1. And if you remember what it said in the directions, you have to factor that out. Okay, so I factored it out. Now, let's complete the square. What goes here? 2 divided by 2 is 1 squared is 1. Well, that's easy enough. And so now I need to balance the equation, and I put a 5 here. Why am I putting a 5? Well, this is actually 5 times 1. All right, so what is this 5 coming from? This is 5 times 1. That's definitely a trick. When we factor out a term, you're going to have to remember to put it back in. Okay, so this is going to be 5, perfect square, x plus 1 squared, equals 7. Now to find x, we're going to divide by 5, so you have x plus 1 squared is 7 fifths. Let's take the square root, so x plus 1 is the square root of 7 fifths. Now those are not perfect square, so I'm not going to go any further. I'm just going to leave it as plus or minus the square root of 7 over 5 minus 1. And I know that that is not common denominators. We haven't put it together, but because it's kind of complicated, I'm going to let you leave it like that. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to show you what it would look like if you actually did finish this question. Well, you would need to, first of all, rationalize the denominator. So if you multiplied 7 over 5 by root 5 over root 5, you would get root 35 over 5. And then we would need common denominators. So you would have minus, well, if I want this to be 5, this becomes 25. So x is plus or minus 
the root of 35 minus 25 over 5. Okay. We'll try one more here. There's a little bit of a problem. This H is supposed to be a 0. It's a typo. Okay. So, I don't know if I like the order. I'd like to have everything like the last one. So I'm going to bring all of this stuff to the other side to make it positive. So I have 5, 5t squared minus 30t plus 55 equals 0. And then I think I'm going to divide by 5. So I get t squared minus 6t plus 11 equals 0. Now you notice in this one, I divided everything by 5, but I didn't in B. It's because I couldn't divide 2 by 5. Okay, this one had a common factor, so it just makes it a little bit easier. So let's isolate the T values. This is going to be plus... Oh, uh, that's negative. I just realized this is a negative... 55. So that's going to be a negative 11. So positive 11. So this is going to be a 9. So I can add 9. So this will be t minus 3 squared is 20. And so t minus 3 will be plus or minus root 20. t will be plus or minus root 20 plus 3. And I will accept that answer. But if you look in your homework, you're always going to get this answer. Because they're going to simplify any radical that can be simplified. Okay, that's a bit of a longer lesson. Tricky. Make sure you do a few of these. There are enough of them there that you should try them to get comfortable at it. Everyone is slightly different. You need practice. Go to it.